objective of the project were to undertake a thorough diagnosis of uh, contemporary capitalism in, in Western Europe especially and uh, come out with uh, policy recommendations concerning uh, inclusive, uh, just uh, and uh, environmental sustainable growth. The Easy Grow project was organized across some uh, cross-cutting team with the main idea to understand why Europe uh, is not growing enough or as the US but also to provide a diagnostic uh, tool. It involves several units, of course there is the Santana unit from Italy which is the leader of the project and there is a Science Po in France, there is the University of Bielefeld from Germany, there is uh, both uh, University College London, University of Saxon from the UK, University from uh, Ljubljana, and uh, there is the initiative of policy dialogue in uh, New York City. The idea of this project, which was very participatory, was that uh, usually most of the units were involved in uh, several teams, both from the empirical side and the theoretical side, so there was quite a lot of uh, joint work. I think uh, uh, we have been successful in uh, giving a broad picture of the dynamics uh, of the recent transformation uh, of uh, Europe in particular, we reached uh, also some very unconventional uh, results concerning, for example, the fact that uh, austerity policies uh, are self-defeating, that uh, um, we debunked, uh, I think, uh, the myth of labor market flexibility as the panacea able to restart uh, European growth. And uh, on the policy side, we came out uh, with uh, an important proposal. involved on several topics of the EasyGrow project and also several work packages. For instance, in work package one, the unit was even involved in the empirical analysis of policies to foster uh, green transitions. And one important achievement of the unit, which is contained in one of the deliverables of the project, has been finding that the uh, market-based policies uh, like carbon taxes are not always effective. Uh, their effectiveness actually depends on the technological competences uh, acquired by a country. The UNIT's Pro Science Policy Research Unit at the University of Sussex was leading Work Package 1 and the main aim of Work Package 1 was to uh, provide a diagnosis of the state of the art in Europe in terms of innovation, so to dig into the roots of um, the innovation performance at the level of the states that would explain divergences or multi-speed uh, Europe. When we looked at the empirics of these elements, what we find it was a very, as I said, variegated map of uh, national innovation systems. But the interesting story compared to um, compared to previous literature and, and compare also to the possibilities to act upon this, was that even the story of success, so the, the kind of countries that were successfully, they were quite uh, variegated. I guess the, the empirical map of technological clubs in Europe has given us an idea of how and why innovation might be a source of growth but also a source of divergence in terms of, of growth and I guess by looking at all the elements uh, of the innovation system we also find out what are the potential elements to act upon. The Bielefeld unit mainly worked on I would say two themes. Uh, one was uh, sustainable and inclusive growth 
And there we look particularly at the differences between regions and we develop some multi-regional models of heterogeneous agents, uh, heterogeneous households, heterogeneous firms. And uh, within these models we, we try to understand how different types of, of policies, uh, policies also inspired by action cohesion policies by the European Union, influence the, the convergence between regions, but at the same time how they influence uh, inequality within different regions. And uh, so the main insight from this analysis is that uh, if we want to foster convergence uh, both between regions but also reduce inequality within regions, we need to, to focus really on technology policies. We find that if we, if we can influence these technology choices, then such policies can be actually very efficient in uh, fostering convergence between regions but also uh, reducing inequality. So the narrative up until now in Europe is that there are differences in competitiveness between, say, the core and the periphery because of part of Europe maybe spending too much, having a high deficit, the other parts tying in their belts and you know investing more in areas that uh, create productivity growth. But what has been completely missing is that actually there have been very large differences within Europe about strategies on how to become competitive. And this focus on the deficit has only made that discussion more narrow and worse. It hasn't actually led to the right medicine because the diagnosis was wrong. So what the project tried to do was to consider how can we actually achieve a new type of Europe by admitting that we need to invest out of the crisis, but investment has not just a rate, but also a direction. And so we use this concept of mission-oriented investments in order to think about how can we achieve growth that is both innovation-led, that is more sustainable, so greener, but also more inclusive. The research done by our group followed the, mainly the um, main objective of Work Package 4. So our goal was to look at the financialization of the real economy in various manifestations in European firms and to observe how this creates disruption in value creation and value extraction process in these companies and through that to study the impact the financialization has on innovation and growth of these firms. The evidence shows that compared to the US firms, um, the European ones are less financialized for now, um, but that we should learn from the U.S. experience to try to prevent in advance uh, with policy initiatives that the U.S. situation will not happen. So within the Easy Growth project at the University of Zurich, in particular the Finaxus Center for Financial Networks and Sustainability, in collaboration with other partners in the Easy Growth project, in particular, in particular with the OFCE in Nice and with um, the Santana School in Pisa, uh, we've been analyzing the uh, unintended consequences of an excessive level of financialization in the economy. One of the um, final goal of this project is also to provide uh, um, potential remedies for uh, the unintended consequences of financialization and these are on the one hand uh, proceed to a program of somehow definancialization of the economy um, understand the importance of uh, the so-called mission-oriented um, approach uh, in particular for innovation research and uh, the industrial policies for Europe at the same time we think it's really important that we start thinking about um, the possibility of introducing um, a maximum level of leverage of uh, the financial institutions towards the financial sector itself. So trying to curb this self-loop between uh, the financial sector and itself with, that amplifies the shocks. And maybe a, a sort of minimum level of leverage that the financial system should have towards the real economy. Uh, these are not guaranteed to treat all problems, but at least we should have a discussion on these potential policies.